Comrade Monica Gainkos and your children, the extended family of Comrade Dr. Hage Godfrey Gainkob, our president, fellow mourners. Good evening. Many people have been speaking at these services since the demise of our president, one of the greatest leaders of our time. To those that continue to listen to these messages, it might sound if we are all sharing the same message using different words. But this demonstrates the nature and the character of the man whose life we are gathered here to celebrate. His Excellency, Dr. Hage Gottfried Gainkop, was a selfless leader who touched the lives of many in almost a similar fashion. This is due to the fact that he never discriminated against anyone. When you rubbed shoulders with him, as you might have heard from many other speakers, over the past few days, your life will, not, will never remain the same. I am here to pay tribute to this great son of the soil, a leader, mentor, and friend to whom I attribute my professional and political career. Our story is long, and it will take me countless days to narrate. I am, I am only given a few minutes in which to recount a compressed story of our journey of over 44 years since I met Dr. Gainco. But first, Allow me, fellow mourners, to assure you, my dear sister and comrade Monica, your children and the entire Gainkop family, that as you might have seen or heard about the Namibians' reaction to your loss, you are not alone. You have lost a true companion, a loving and caring husband, father and brother, but be assured that there are many shoulders to cry on should such, need, should, should such be needed, and mine is one of them. My sister, your dear husband left you in the hands of Namibians. Always be comforted by the fact that people of this country will never shy away from rendering a supporting hand to you. Fellow mourners, in his last days, I had the privilege, the privilege to visit him, and we spent, we spent about two hours discussing all sorts of things while watching his favorite sport, football. When I left, I was a bit shaken because this was not the comrade Gainikob I had gotten to know. I was distressed to see him going through such agony. Over the years that I had known him, I had gotten used to this imposing jovial figure, my go-to leader 
whenever I needed counsel. I remember in the early years of independence, when I was redeployed from the Ministry of Defense, where I was a permanent secretary, to the newly established Ministry of Prisons, I was not thrilled by this change. And as such, I sought his wise counsel. What he told me on that day, I went to him many years ago, still echoes in my years to this day, and has continued to be my source of inspiration. I quote, go and make something out of nothing, he said. I indeed went and made something out of nothing. Having a member of Comrade Gainkob's caliber by my side was critical because during the time of the struggle, not all of us had the opportunity to further our academic education. After independence, while given administrative responsibilities, Comrade Gainkob would be, would be very vital in shaping my life in the civil service. Our departed president was good at scouting and identifying leadership talent. He would then nurture that talent and over time bring the best out of such individuals. While at the Ministry of Prisons, I one day received a call from him. One would be worried when called by the Prime Minister thinking that they may have erred somewhere. He told me the president was considering appointing me as second to the cabinet. I was thunderstruck. I didn't know what to say, and I asked, I asked for a few hours to reflect on this matter. The inspirational person that he was, Comrade Gainkob told me to take, to take up the challenge and assured me of, of his support because it was not one man's job. Being secretary to the cabinet was not a very easy task. It involved a lot of conflict management between permanent secretaries and their ministers. Some conflicts were difficult for me to resolve, and I had to rely on the wisdom of my boss and my mentor, Comrade Gainkop. As second to the cabinet, I served under him twice. First when he was the first prime minister, and then when he returned as the fourth prime minister. I remember when he came, in the cabinet as the fourth prime minister. He came and he normally sit on the right of the president. I sit on the left hand of the president. I saw him coming and I went to, to meet him. We looked at each other, we smiled. I don't know what was it, we never said a word. Everyone went to sit at his seat. I think maybe he was saying to me, are you still here? <laughs> and I was saying to him, welcome back. When he became the, head, the third head of state of the Republic of Namibia, I was honored to have been appointed by him as the Minister of Presidential Affairs, now referred to as Minister in the Presidency. Subsequently, or subsequent to that, he entrusted me with further ministerial obligations at other institutions up to where I am today. For that, I will, end, I will unendingly be grateful to him. There are many ways 
to describe our leader. But for my part, and alongside his many other attributes, I would like to describe him as a strategist, an architect, and a leader with the gift of, so of foresight. I will go to him with a raw idea that will come back refined. You know, when I was there during the, when I, I came from the prisons, I was still have that mentality of a soldier. And it, it, you know, you, you are not properly refined. So I will go to him with notes, some complaints, some raw ideas. You know, as one of my colleagues was saying, you have to watch him because you do a mistake, he will, he will let you to go and think again. So I will either call George and ask, how is the mood? <laughs> and George, will, if, you, if you hear George say, I saw so. <laughs> then you know. But I will still go, despite so so I will go there. And you will come, you, you come and say, yeah. You will be drawing. When you see him doing this, you, you must be prepared. And you will, uh, Comrade Prime Minister, I have this, uh, there is this minister, so so, PS is, uh, uh, what did you do? What did you do? Eh? There's no solution, you must go and bring some ideas for me to, to, to approve. Or no, no, you just come, you mean I'm, I can teach you. This is not a school. But I said, oh, but come Prime Minister, the other day you said, I must always come and... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and then you, you go on and you go on and you, you, you say, you hear him say, yeah, you see? That's exactly what I want. I want to hear those. And now the, the meeting starts. The meeting will start, you will go there around five o'clock uh, when everything is calm. The meeting will only start at six, the real one. You end at around eight or nine. That is now the real meetings. That is the person we are talking about. He was a good teacher. He grounded me. And I always realized that I knew very little. He was selfish in imparting knowledge and skills to others. As a beneficiary of that knowledge, words to thank him will never be enough. When he assume presidency, or become the president of our country. I was his minister. So he one day called me and he said, you see, Comrade Kapofi, I want to meet Theo Ben and Hidipo in my office. I just want to have a, some casual chat with them as president, just for them, for me, just for us to touch base and to, re, to reflect on our journey. And then I, I said, how do you want it to be done? Do you want it formal or do you want it? Uh, he said, I, what I don't know is whether they will agree to the idea. As you know, that time, a depot whom we refer to as HH had his own party. And you should know, Ben was once, he, you know, you remember Ben took over from him that time. So there was this other, you know, that system was there. <laughs> so, so he said, I want you to sound out, sound them out. And so how do I do that? I said, ah, 
You have been around with all of them. Find a way. So I went to Theo first. As you know, Theo, that time, Theo, I think, was a speaker, if, I, if I'm not mistaken. So I went to him. You know, Theo is a very calm, cool cat. Shake hands. Yes, yes, come, yes, come. And we, we quietly discuss, and uh, there is this idea of the trial to come together. What do you think? No, it's a good thing. When? Tomorrow? Say, no, no, no. It's, it's, we, 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 we. I have first to, to check the logistics, how to do it, but first, I just want to hear whether you are amenable to the idea. Say, why not? So, then the task was now to go to HH. You know, HH was a lifetime friend of, of President Genko. But politics, politics divide people. I do not know how, I did not know how to approach him. Because there were times that I was, I was asked to talk to him by, uh, by the president, the, by the, by the pr pr prime minister then, Genikob, on how to proceed with the country's politics. HH was adamant; he didn't want to hear anything about Genikob. I said, "Okay," and I reminded him of this thing. Now the prime minister, I said, "Come, president, you remember." So I just sound him out. So I went there. When I went, HH said, why not? It's a good thing. So I went back to my, to my boss. I reported progress. And then he said, fix the time. Look at, uh, I said, give me the time. I organize everything. I reported everything he said. I gave them times where to meet. I arranged for the system to, to meet them at State House. I disappeared. What, what happened, I, can, I don't know. The, the other thing that happened was, towards the end of HH's life, He, he sent someone to me saying he wants to return to Swap. And the person who was sent, there were two. I trusted them. It was not a gimmick. So he wanted me to convey this message to the president. So I went to the president, and I said, Comrade President, I, I have this thing to, to inform you. Uh, you know, sometimes he's, if he's not in his, in his best, at his best, you, 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 he, will, he, will, he will take time and say, yeah, yeah, just talk, I, I'm listening. I said, Comrade President, I, I got a message I, that I was asked to come inform you that HH wants to return to Swapo. He dropped everything that he was doing. And he said, what? He said, yes, Comrade President, HH says he wants to return to Swapo. Oh, do you have a letter? He said, no, I don't have a letter. Now, let him write and let him send that letter to the Secretary General of the party. I conveyed, obediently I conveyed the message and HH did that, did just that. And the President said, that is a very good thing that Comrade Hidipo has done. So this is some of the things that I remember we have been doing with the president, with our late president. There are many others, of course, you don't expect me to, 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 to tell. 
there are those that I will, I will, I will, I will join him without revealing them. <laughs> what I have just shared here is but a little bit of my personal encounters with Comrade Gainkop to exemplify how he molded and assisted me in becoming who I am today. I now turn to his political journey to share milestones I can recall on how he helped shape the administration of this country. As many called him Omes, as, as many called him, Omes was not only strongly built and tall, but he was of towering nature or stature in many disciplines too. Some of us who, have, who had worked closely with him knew that his ascendancy to the highest office was a matter of time. As a strategist, and from the very start, Comrade Hage championed the cause of good governance, transparency, and accountability. Some of, initiate, some of his initiatives include the introduction of the Public Service Charter and the general principle which form the basis of improved efficient, efficient and effective service delivery. The charter formed the basis for developing individual service charters across different offices, ministries, and agencies. In this context, he was instrumental in, in his office holding the National Integrity Conference in, 1980, in 1998. Because of these initiatives, focusing on institutional strengthening and good governance, Namibia was and continued to be invited to public and good governance for us worldwide. I recall vividly his role as the chairman of the 14th meeting of experts of the United Nations program in public administration and finance. As early as 1992, he made strides to accelerate affirmative action and to develop better coordination between the skills of personnel and the demand for work. As prime minister, he was ch challenged to integrate the 11th ethnic administration to form one administration or one administration or public service of the Republic of Namibia. This he managed to do with distinction. He was able to reform and organize our, administ our administration and today it is fairly comparable with the very best in the world. Comrade Gainiko believed in consultation, as many others have said, over the years, knew that the key to successful nation building was to consult and engage widely. Over the years, his approach towards consultation involved having conversations with various sectors and stakeholders, from regional councils, local authorities, traditional leaders, academics, media, practitioners, religious leaders, and workers and employers. These conversations would not just end there. As a strategist, Comrade Hage would take these gems and take aways and find ways of building them back into our Namibian house. He has spearheaded Namibia's leap into formation age. As a result of his commitment and leadership, Namibia has been hard at work to implement the e-governance strategy and action plan for seamless adoption of digital information and communication technology. As far back as 1999, he also initiated IT workshops for cabinet ministers to further enhance efficiency. In order to reduce digital divide, between rural and urban areas, Comrade Hage showed the seeds of establishing rural community ICT centers, and through that, finding ways for coordinating the implementation 
of the decentralization policy. As president and champion, he took keen interest in this field and constituted the fourth industrial revolution task force to act to assess Namibia's progress and the readiness to adopt digital technology. As mentioned earlier, Comrade Gainkob's negotiation and conflict management skills were unparalleled. As a leader with foresight, he on numerous occasions helped diffuse conflicts between workers and the employers with ordinary, extraordinary negotiation skills and the ability to navigate disputes by diffusing potential explosive situation. He was an advocate of peace. He was an advocate of peace. He worked relentlessly to promote the policy of national reconciliation. In 1991, as Prime Minister, he chaired the historic land conference, which was attended by over 500 delegates from over Namibia. The recommendation of this conference formed the basis of the government's land reform. The Prime Minister played a pivotal role in the implementation of the peace project. Maybe many of you do not know what a peace project is all about. That is when the ex-combatants of PLAN were in the street. I remember one of the political leaders was taken hostage and Comrade Gainkop was assigned to handle that. That resulted in about 10,000 ex-combatants recruited in the public service. That he called a peace project because he knew, he knew then that without Without not doing that, there is a lot at stake. So peace, and he said peace, peace is very expensive. Of course, Comrade Gainko wouldn't have become this individual we are celebrating had it not been for the vanguard of our movement, for the Vanguard and for the leadership that has molded him, the, mold, the leadership of Sam Nyoma, the leadership of Hifike Punyapuhamba, and the collective in the family of Swapo. These are the people who had identified his potential, molded and guided him before and after independence. Along with his many cabinet colleagues, this collective helped to shape the leader who eventually became our president. Today, as we bid farewell to a strategist and architect and a leader with foresight, let us carry forward his vision of a prosperous, inclusive Namibia. We thank Comrade Gainkob for his unwavering dedication and profound impact on our nation. We have lost a patriot who loved his country and its people dearly. His empathy was beyond measure. Of course, like all of us, he was not a saint. He has his critics, but what he has done for this country is immeasurable. We are enjoying the fruits of his contribution to the creation of this state. Although he has departed, this nation will still be benefiting from his great work in years to come. We may be critical of him, but let's accord him the respect he deserves. Let's give Caesar what belongs to Caesar, compatriots. President Gainkob will, will be dearly missed, but his legacy will live on in our hearts in the enduring spirit, prosperity of Namibia. 
Hage Genkob was a fair leader. May his caring and uniting spirit keep hovering over our nation. I thank you for listening.